Spring is just around the corner, and what better time to take stock of all the latest and greatest clean energy updates. First up, big news from the transportation sector. We kicked off the year by announcing America's first ever decarbonization blueprint. This is an incredibly ambitious roadmap for removing all greenhouse gas pollution from our transportation sector by 2050. And DOE helped develop it along with the Departments of Transportation, Housing and Urban Development, and the EPA. We've never had anything quite like it, and I'm so proud that DOE played a part. Now, speaking of transportation, electric vehicle sales have tripled since the start of this administration, and these EVs are only going to get better thanks to efforts like our EVs for All program, which is investing $42 million in next generation battery R&D. And we want to see batteries getting cheaper, tougher, longer lasting, and we want them made right here in America. As President Biden said in his State of the Union address, I will make no apologies. That, that we're investing, investing in, in, to make America stronger. Investing in American innovation and industries will define the future that China intends to be dominating. Now, we're delivering on that commitment. Since the president took office, we've seen more than $90 billion of private sector investment in American-made batteries and solar panels, 158 new and expanded manufacturing facilities, and thousands of new jobs. And those investments are going to pay off big for American consumers. Following the State of the Union, the secretary hit the road to see this progress firsthand in Utah, where geothermal energy offers a clean source of baseload power in Reno, Nevada, where $2 billion in a DOE loan is helping recycle old EV batteries into new ones, and in Massachusetts, where a company is working to realize the immense potential of fusion energy to power our world. The Secretary also had the opportunity to travel to Puerto Rico once again as part of DOE's effort to modernize the island's electricity grid. She heard from the island's residents and its leaders about the devastation caused by their outdated, unreliable electrical system. And she saw rays of hope where distributed clean energy resources like microgrids helped keep the lights on during recent storms. For far too long, needless obstacles have delayed critical improvements to Puerto Rico's grid. We know that access to renewable energy can help save lives. So I'm proud of DOE's work with FEMA to cut red tape and to kick off upgrades that will help put Puerto Rico on a path to a more resilient and reliable energy future. Okay. That's all for this update. Lots more to come. Until next time.